are uh, Ludington, Michigan, October 6, 2021, heading out for a little offshore action on the feeding time. Great charter boat here out of Ludington. Uh, stay tuned, we're gonna shoot some video today, hopefully catch some fish and uh, show you what offshore fishing is all about here in Ludington. So we are heading out of the channel here in Ludington. The sun's just rising. Uh, beautiful day. Absolutely great group of guys with me. All good friends. All friends I made through fishing, which is kind of the cool thing about the outdoors. You meet a lot of neat people. Um, so we got out, we ran about eight miles straight out of Ludington. So we ran west and we're about 300 feet of water. Well, it didn't take long. We get the rods in the water and uh, you'll see the shoot rigger take off and Captain Brian from True Blue Charters is the first one on the rock. You can get it. Get to it. Oh, look at that. Like a professional. So we fought this fish quite a while. We got it right up to the boat and unfortunately bit the hook right at the back of the boat. So Brian, we put on timeout, not really. But anyways, uh, a couple minutes later, we had another fish on and Chris, one of my uh, YouTube followers, he was the lucky guy to grab that rod and he's gonna show you the, the whole method of how we get these fish into the boat. All right, we got a fish going on a 300 steel, weighted steel line. If I could remember what bait it was on, it would be great. It might be a yak. Uh, it's either a yak, Jared, or it's a uh, SS skinny jeans. One of the two. Something green. Chris is on the rod. Chris is doing a good job so far. Keep good tension, you'll see how when he when he starts reeling before he goes down that rod stays loaded bent over the whole time that's really a key factor to not going down too fast and allowing that line to get slack and that planer board to jump back every time you release so if you watch your planer board your planer board should stay in the same spot as you reel down to the board it shouldn't go backwards if it's going backwards you're slacking to the fish every time some guys are asking like how do we coach um people on a rod and a lot of it is you know i check the drag often sometimes the drag will loosen up we leave the clickers on we can kind of hear what's going on if you hear him if he pulls up and it clicks the whole way then he's pulling too hard and and you either need more drag or to slow the boat down or whatever you need to do uh, we're going pretty slow right now so we won't put a bag in unless we need to so far we're gaining on the fish pretty well now what we'd normally do here is um, as that board gets closer you don't want the board to go in and out of the water so you don't want him to lift it up because it'll start to dive so what we'll have him do is keep his rod lower so Chris will reel down and then he'll start working sideways across the board and then reel back down into the board and that way you're gaining line and you're still uh, still keeping good tension and you're not diving the board now Seth is pretty much a master at this part um, what he'll have him do is take that rod he has him set the rod right on his shoulder and reels and then if he needs the help he'll hand line that a little bit this way when you release there is never slack so that's kind of the key to the whole thing All right, so we're getting close. I can actually see the leader in the line. Um, so we'll just kind of maintain, keep the same program going. 
as the fish gets towards the surface, we're going to coax the, the, our, whoever's reeling our fish in. We don't want that fish to go in and out of the water. We prefer to keep it in the water, even if you have to slow your retrieve. If a fish is shaking its head in the water, it has resistance around it, can't shake its head as hard, but shaking it on the surface, there's no resistance from the water, and it has a lot more force when it's shaking. So always try to keep that fish in the water. Sometimes we'll even at, hold the tip of the rod right in the water to help get that a little bit closer. Um, I'll have Luke go up to the shifter here. We're on a 31 Tierra, so we got twins uh, inboard, so he'll just go in and out of gear for me. We didn't tell Chris this was a 300. He thinks it's a three color. Is it in yet, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> it's in there. Oh, we're not even quite to leader yet. See me go and grab it. All right, so now that fish, we're gonna start watching that fish and it's come up on the surface. So we just wanna keep it in the water. Yep, keep your retrieve good. Let's take that, give me another click. So I just gave him a little bit more. Just slow down just a little bit, try and keep that fish kind of right in that water. So now we always prep the back of the boat for the fish to coming in. So we're gonna get all the rods out of the way that we can. We wanna have as much space as we possibly can have. Even if we have to take diver rods and move them to the other side of the boat, we will do that. Makes your life a lot easier. All right, neutral. In. Yeah. Neutral one more time. Ooh, nice big steelhead. Wow, did not fight like a steelhead. Well, we got one in the box. We're going to get the lines back out and hopefully get another one on here shortly. So it didn't take long and we were hooked up again. This is uh, my first mate from the summer, Seth. Uh, great fisherman. Really good guy, uh, very knowledgeable on the back of the boat, and uh, he does a great job getting this one right into the net. Fish. Oh, all right, we just hit a couple fish. Uh, it's starting to pick up. We're out around the 4,000 line now, so we're quite a, quite a ways offshore. Uh, looking for some temperature change in the bottom temperature, so the temperature at the probe. We're trying to find a change there. Um, we've been slowly finding it, and. It's, we just moved our probe down a little bit deeper. Both of our divers went uh, low diver on each side. This side we have one of these new Dreamweaver paddles. It's gonna come out next year, Dragon Slayer. Uh, we're gone? Nope. Oh, he's there? Yeah. Seth, for Chris, somebody grab a net. Gonna need a net twice. So we got this new paddle from Dreamweaver, just came out. It'll be out next year on the market. It has a fin. Now, um, we were, had been running this with the fin up, which makes it rotate. I just put it fin down. I got a hot tip from somebody, uh, Adam, on uh, Bear With Me. He said that he's been running it fin down and catching fish on it. So we just tried it and we got another one going, it sounds like. All right, we got a 350 copper going right now. Uh, getting pulled by a brand new Ninja board. These are awesome boards. Uh, we've been running them for a few years now. All one hand operation. You'll see how easy it is to take this board off when we get a little bit closer on it. Nice thing about them is they really don't dive. They will go under, but they usually flip right back up and stay above the surface. Um, really great board if you're in the market. You don't need to do any improvements to the board. They're ready to go out of the box. Okay, why don't you tape this? Are you taping? Okay. See? Do this real quick. All right, so the simple thing with the Dreamweavers, all you gotta do with one hand, you can release this board, push the button, that's it, board's off. You never have any slack going to your rod. 
so it's really good. This fish has been on a little while, so what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna drop another board, or drop an, a bag in the water to help slow the boat down just a couple tents, and that'll take a little pressure off the fish. So let's do that right here. We got our drift bag. Put that in, the fish hawk will probably back down two to two to three tenths of a mile an hour. That'll help take a little pressure off on the on the fish, help gain a little line on them. You gotta think when you're reeling a fish in, you're tearing a hole in its mouth the whole way in. So if you're putting too much pressure on a fish at the beginning of the fight, you're tearing a really big hole in its mouth. So there's a, definitely a balance between taking your time and and you know and horsing a fish or pushing it, pushing a fish hard. Chris is a pro though, he's done this before. All right, Chris has got this fish almost here. So we're gonna go through our netting process again. He's gonna have to slow down a little bit so I can get it all done. So I'm gonna have him back up just a touch. I'm gonna take the shoot rod and get it right out of the way. Oh man, that's a big steelhead. So now I got a net. Then I'm going to come, uh, I'm going to keep the basket of the net out of the water. I don't want that to be in the water. Then I'm going to scoop under the fish and then back up. That way that net doesn't drag back. Then I bring the net all the way to the boat and just lift straight up over the gunnel. We got a really nice steelhead here. Beautiful fish. Like a half ounce sinker. Nice fish. Absolutely beautiful steelhead out here in Ludington. Everybody thinks once those fish go into the river, the mature kings, that there's nothing left to catch. Chris, you want to hold up your uh, hold up your catch here. One of them. Very nice. All right, we've been out here oh about five six hours now. I think we're gonna call it a day. A little bit slower than it's been, but we still had some good action. I think we got uh, we got eight fish in the box. So we're gonna take those, head back to shore, get these lines in, head back to shore. We're gonna clean these up, show you how to do that. And then we're gonna cook them up and, and enjoy some of this uh, wonderful fish out of Lake Michigan. We're about nine miles offshore right now and it's absolutely beautiful out here. It's not normally like this in October, but we've been really fortunate lately. If you can get out offshore anytime, late September, October, even into November, if it's safe to get out there, there's some phenomenal fishing out here on Lake Michigan. So we'll see you soon. Well, it's always fun when you're out with a bunch of buddies out on the boat and they all know how to bring those lines in. So here's our whole crew from today. We're just ripping these lines in and getting everything put away, getting ready for a little bit of a run back in. I'm working some of my fancy camera stuff. Hope you like it. And just like that, we hit another one. All right, we're back. We just hit one on uh, high wire. Uh, I think it's a chrome, eight inch chrome spin doctor with a pickle sunshine that Captain Luke made up. Uh, this is Captain Luke and Captain Brian from True Blue Charters up in Traverse City. You've probably seen them on the channel before. Super nice guys. One very uh, well seasoned. Yes. Luke and I actually met in our captain's class uh, 11 years ago. Luke was about 18, so and I was you know 22 <laughs> or something like that. But we got a nice. But we'll get back to this in just a second. I'm going to show you a little bit of hand lining, and uh, maybe we'll get a little action shot on the on the net as well all right this fish is almost here as you can see we've moved our shoot rigger out of the way we have a wide open back on the deck here this is a, a high diver we got about a 20 foot leader so we'll be hand lining this fish and then we also have our our uh probably what 40 inch fly lead and our eight inch spinny on there so we got a lot of length to deal with but we're going to show you kind of how we do it and uh, the tricks of the trade, maybe. And 
hopefully we're gonna get an awesome underwater shot that you're gonna see. But so far my underwater shot skills are very, very bad. So you see how Chris is working this fish. He's keeping the fish in the water as much as he can. Brian's going in and out of gear for us. It actually looks like a king. And what a jump I Pretty saw. certain yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, awesome. So we haven't got into the kinks today, so this is our first one. Always a great way to end. I think sometimes when you're pulling rods, all that extra flash of all those baits moving, I think it fires them up. I think it's a good good habit to have your mate constantly changing baits throughout yes, the day. I think yeah. Seth should be pulling rods. Seth, Seth should be just, you know, I know you just put that in, but maybe let's just try a different spoon. <laughs> So we've been having a great day out here. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, we're nine miles off of Ludington, uh, 400 feet of water. And uh, as you can see about a one inch, one inch chop, you know, probably about a six inch roll. Beautiful out. Great people, we've had a great time so far. Okay, so what that's gonna do, is he's gonna help me. He'll grab that line and he'll pull it down to my hand. And now I'll start working this fish. Try and keep the fish low and in the water. Don't get any gear. Just like that. You saw that, you know, we have a lot of people watching. Well, Luke saw that fish getting close to that out and down. He just grabs the out and down, shoves the tip in the water, gets the line away from the fish, keep you from getting tangled. That is a really nice coho. Just a chrome spin doctor. Pickle Sunshine Fly, Action Fly. Big old VMC hook on there. Keeps them on. An absolutely beautiful coho salmon. Nice one. That is a dandy. So I think this is the one we're gonna eat. So let's go get it cleaned up and uh, we'll show you how we're gonna prepare it. All right, so we're gonna start our journey back in. We're about nine miles offshore, straight out of Ludington. A beautiful day, really, uh, in October, does not get like this very often. Uh, so we really, truly are blessed. Uh, big thanks to the whole crew, all good friends of mine. Uh, we got Scott Keekstra from Captain Chuck's and um, Captain Brian and Luke Springstead from True Blue Charters. And then, of course, Chris from uh, uh, YouTube, YouTube follower, great guy, uh, another good friend that I just made uh, from doing this and from hunting and fishing and, and it's just really something to be said for, for getting outdoors and, and meeting people like-minded as you. Uh, I hope you're enjoying so far. We're going to head in, clean these fish up, we're going to cook them up and then enjoy them. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, please shoot me a message. Hit that like button, that subscribe. Also follow us on Facebook. We're always doing uh, posts on there, information about our hunting and fishing that we're doing in the area. We're making it back into Lake Street. Another shout out to Feeding Time Charters in Ludington uh, for getting us out on their boat. Hiatus was already put away for the year, so uh, Kevin was, Captain Kevin was happy to let us take this one out. All right, we had a great day on Lake Michigan, caught some a great box of fish, and now we're gonna clean them up. Uh, first thing, take my steel. I'm gonna just get my knife, get the edge nice and straight. I'm gonna grab, we got a beautiful coho in here. So I'll take this one, I'm gonna flay this out. Got a couple really great recipes that we're gonna do on this one. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna cut, make a cut from right be behind the pectoral fins right to the anal fin. I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna clean this fish, is that all right? You wanna come over here and be in the video? 
Yeah, those are the eggs. Oh. Yeah, eggs, eggs yeah. Eggs coming out. Yep, eggs coming out. All right, buddy. All right, so the first cut we make is that. That cut releases this. We're gonna cut down right here. We're gonna cut right until you feel the backbone. backbone. Then you're gonna rotate your knife and just follow that backbone right down the fish to the tail. And then we're just gonna make a slice right through the tail. That gives us a fillet just like that. So great looking fillet there. We'll just move that off to the side. Yeah, we're gonna have some fishies. This is Eli. This is captain in training. Same thing on the other side. This time we're going to skin it. So what we're going to do, same cut. We'll follow that backbone down. We're going to cut all the way to the tail, not cut all the way through. Flip that fillet over. Then we cut. Yeah, we're going to cut down to the skin. And then you're just going to feel that skin with your knife and follow the skin down until you go all the way to the end. So we have a nice fillet there. Take our guts. And then take our ribs out. Just like that. And that fillet is ready. Now we're going to prep this up. So we're going to go run your finger right here on this lateral line. You'll feel the last bone. Make a cut. This is going to be bone free. So we'll take and we're just going to trim this gray meat off the back. It's mainly the fat deposits of the fish, kind of the bloodline. We're just going to trim that off. Good sharp knife. It's easy to cut that off with. And then we'll do the same thing up the other side. Flip that over, trim it. You can kind of feel it has a different, uh, it's a little bit softer than the rest of the meat. So you just kind of follow that off. You want to trim all that off. And then you're going to make a little V cut right here along the bloodline, both sides, just like you would on a saltwater fish. Trim that off. And you got a pretty good looking fillet there. And what you can do is take that, get it nice and cold, put it in your refrigerator. And that will be your, uh, once it's firmed up a little bit, you can trim the rest of it off. So now we're gonna trim the rest of this fillet up. Remember the two sets of bones. So there's a set of bones right here. You're gonna find the lower side of that bone. You're gonna make a cut. And then that bone is a Y bone. It goes like this in the fillet. So you just follow that down. Now you have a boneless piece right here. We still need to trim it. And then you're gonna have a loin here so that you get on the top side of that bone, you follow it down, follow it down, and right down to your board. Now you have another piece of boneless right here. So like I said, we'll get these nice and cold. We'll trim this gray meat off. That gets rid of a lot of that fishy taste that some people experience with salmon, just because they're not cleaning that off. Now we can clean this a little bit more and get a little bit of the meat out of the center of the loin here. We'll do that before we put it on the grill. Same thing here. We're gonna just take, get underneath those ribs Follow that rib and now you roll your knife back towards the rib and you just follow that rib out. Trim that other off, trim the bottom of the fillet. Now you have a beautiful coho fillet. Delicious. These are going to be great. So stick around. We're going to get the fryer going and I think we get the grill or the smoker. Maybe both. We'll see what happens. And we have a special treat for you, so stick around.
all these fish cleaned up and we head to Captain Chuck's too in Ludington. Uh, if you're in Ludington area, stop by. You got to check this place out. Absolute premier fishing and hunting sports shop here in Ludington. All right, so we had a great day on the water and we got the fish all cleaned up. We are here at Captain Chuck's too in Ludington. We're going to cook up some fish. I got a good friend, Eric Budrow here. Uh, he's been cooking for just a couple years. A couple, uh, 25. Great employee here at uh, Captain Chuck's, uh, avid fisherman. If you have any questions, make sure you find him. If you got any recipes that you'd like to know about, come find this guy at Captain Chuck's. He'd be happy to, to fill you in on the details. So I'm going to turn it over to him, and we're going to prepare up some of this salmon and get it on the grill, and looks like the deep fryer as well. Hi, folks. How are we doing today? This is Eric Budrow from Captain Chuck's. We're going to prepare some fresh steelhead that was caught yesterday on Lake Michigan. We are going to do a grilled steelhead with a, a Parmesan crust with, topped with some honey mustard and onion pretzel bites. First, I go ahead by melting half a stick of butter. Um, you can do unsalted if you don't like all the sodium, but I prefer a little sodium, so I'm going with the salted butter. After a half a stick of butter, I put approximately a half a cup of mayonnaise in here. After the mayonnaise, we are going to go with approximately a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Not the shredded, you want the grated. And eyeballing, that's approximately a cup right there. Next, I'm going to add some white wine. You can use any type of white wine you would like. I like to use Pinot Grigio. I mean, any wine that you pretty much drink, you can use in this recipe. I'm going to go about a quarter of a cup. And that's about a quarter right there. After the wine, we're going to go with approximately two to three tea or tablespoons, excuse me, of parsley flakes. There's about three right there. After that, I'm just going to put a couple dashes of pepper. We have all those in together. We want to stir this up. Make sure it's well incorporated. Now, if it's a little runny, always you can always add a little more Parmesan. This seems to be a little runny, so we're going to add a little more. Oops. Now, once all this is incorporated, mixed together, you want to refrigerate it. The best is for at least 24 hours. All right, now that we have our topping for our fish done, I took and made a small tin foil boat, sprayed it first with some cooking spray. Make sure you do not spray this while it is on the grill. You do not want it flaming up. I have the heat on medium high right now, and now I'm going to place my fillets right in here. And now I'm just going to top it with another little boat of tin foil. Now I'll let that go and we'll check on it after about 20, 25 minutes. After it is cooked about three quarters of the way through, we will take our Parmesan mayo mixture that we made earlier, put that on top and top that with our crushed honey mustard and onion pretzel bits. All right, now we've had our, our fillets that we have on our grill are pretty, pretty thin, so they cook pretty quick. This only took approximately five, 10 minutes, and they're about three quarters of the way done. So now I'm gonna take our mayo Parmesan mixture, place it on top. I 
There we go. We are gonna finish it off with the honey mustard onion pretzels. Just make sure you cover the whole thing, spread it on evenly. Doesn't have to look too pretty. And there we go. We will cover it and let it cook for another 10 to 15 minutes. Now we will go back to finish in our fish nuggets. All right, folks, now we're gonna prepare a different method of our steelhead. We're gonna do some deep fried fish nuggets. I cut up a couple fillets into two to three inch chunks and I have them soaking in buttermilk. I like to soak them for at least a half hour before putting them into my dredge or into my mix. In my mix that I'm using, I am using Kel uh, Kellogg's cornflake crumbs, one whole box. And one small whole box of Drake's crispy fry mix. Now for seasonings, I'm gonna add some Lowry seasoned salt. I just eyeball it. If you don't want it too salty, don't add as much. If you want it saltier, add more. After that, I'm gonna add some dill weed. Come on a little faster, open the top up. Some garlic powder. and some dashes of black pepper. After you've added all that, mix it up thoroughly. Now with our deep fried fish nuggets, we want to take, and take as much excess buttermilk as you can off of these. Otherwise it's going to make our batter real clumpy. We don't want that. And as you can see on the right to me, over here I have a cookie sheet with two wire racks. You want to batter them. Lay them on these wire racks before putting them into the deep fryer. Make sure they're coated real nice and good so they turn out nice and crispy. Just like that and we repeat the process till done. Now our oil has heated up to 350 degrees. I'm gonna pull my basket out. I'm gonna place 12 to 14 pieces in at a time. And into the fryer we go. Now I don't really time this out. I will just make sure they start floating and turn to golden brown before I take them out. Once you put them in the deep fryer, do not touch them right away. Otherwise, you'll lose all your batter. Well, folks, we had a little rain delay here. Um, we are back to cooking. We're going to check our deep fryer right now because I think our fish nuggets are nice and golden brown. Let's go ahead and see what they look like. Oh, yeah, look at that. Perfectly golden brown. I'm going to transfer them over here. My cookie sheet with my wire rack. You want to put a paper towel underneath to collect all that excess grease cover it with tin foil keep it warm and we are going to repeat the process well our approximate start to finish time when we put our fish into the deep fryer before it gets golden brown will take somewhere at 350 360 degree temp around six to seven minutes to get nice and golden brown. But times may vary on how dirty your grease is, how much fish you're cooking. So approximately six to seven minutes with clean oil and not as many fish in there. All right, folks, well, our Parmesan crusted steelhead is done. As you can see there, approximate cooking time was about 25 minutes to maybe a half an hour total. Let me get a close-up of that. 
all you have to do is take it off with a spatula, put it on your plate, and have your favorite side with it. You can top it with a little bit of fresh lemon wedges if need be. Otherwise, it's ready to go and eat. Well, our friend's product is done. We have fresh deep fried steelhead nuggets and cornflake drakes batter and our grilled parmesan crusted mayo steelhead topped with our honey mustard and onion pretzels. We are now about to take it inside and enjoy our feast. So we had in, we got a bunch of the crew from uh, Captain Shocks around. Some uh, other fishermen seemed to have smelled the fish and made their way in as well. As you can see, fresh caught fish. It really doesn't get any better than this. Here's a little shot of Scott. <laughs> All right, we had a great time on the water. A uh, big thank you to Captain Chucks for uh, letting us inside uh, out of the rain here while we're cooking up this fish. Uh, Eric did a great job on the fish. Can't wait to try this out. Um, make sure if you're in the Lyington area, check out Captain Chucks. They're also online at their website right down here. They got all your hunting and fishing needs, so get a hold of them. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see future episodes, hit that subscribe button, like and follow our channel, and we can't wait to see you guys again.